Hello everyone, I am your host Anita Punchy Lewis. Thank you for tuning in and joining me on the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. Last week, I shared on the office of the apostle. I spoke on who is an apostle and gave examples of apostles who walked with Christ Jesus, the chief apostle. This week, I'll be continuing. And the question for today's teaching, is the office of the apostle for this day and age? There is the argument out there that Jesus only had 12 original apostles. It is said that only those who saw and walked physically with Jesus during his life here on earth could be called to function as his apostles. However, those who seek to limit apostles to only the 12 who walked with Jesus when he was on earth are blinded by the spirit of religion. I'm repeating that. Those who seek to limit apostles to only the 12 who walked with Jesus when he was on earth are blinded by the spirit of religion. The call of Paul and Barnabas to be apostles happened after Christ Jesus ascended to heaven and indicates that it is an office those called to would embrace and manifest after Jesus had ascended. However, it must be stated, all who are truly called to this office will receive a direct revelation of Christ Jesus as an incarnation of Elohim and the only fit sacrifice to take away the foundational sin of Adam and Eve as basis of restoring the kingdom they lost in due season. That revelation changes his or her worldview to the degree that whatever the apostle suffers for the testimony of Jesus is taken with all joy. The office of the apostle is for today and all ages until the church is reunited in a physical sense with his head Jesus, who is chief apostle sent by the Father from heaven. When Paul was given the blueprint of how Jesus wanted his church to function, the office of apostle featured prominently in the governmental pattern revealed in two scriptures. Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. And he gave some to be, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The other scripture is 1 Corinthians 12, verses 28 to 29. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administration, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Both epistles or letters were written several years after the ascension of Christ Jesus as part of the blueprint for the kingdom church. Therefore, after Christ Jesus returned to heaven, these two letters were written stating that God himself has given apostles to the body of Christ, not mere pastors alone. Let us now take a look at some of those called to the office of apostle after the ascension of Jesus Christ. 
The Bible is clear that there were various people called and sent out as apostles apart from the original 12. These include, but are not limited to, 1. Matthias, who was chosen by using lots as the 11 disciples prayed for the replacement of Judas. Now Judas, we know, was the one who betrayed Jesus. So they were replacing Judas because they only had 11, so they wanted 12, so they wanted one to replace Judas. Acts chapter 1, verses 23 to 26 reads, They proposed two candidates, Joseph, who is also called Barsabbas the Just, and Matthias. They all prayed, Lord Yahweh, you know the heart of every man. Please give us clear revelation to know which of these two men you have chosen to be an apostle and take Judas's place because he renounced his apostleship to go where he belonged. They cast lots and determined that Matthias was the Lord's choice, so he was added to the 11 apostles. So just now I gave Matthias, so now we have Barnabas and Saul. Acts 13, verses 1 to 4. In the church at Antioch, there were a number of prophets and teachers of the word, including Barnabas, Simeon from Niger, Lucius the Libyan, Manian, the childhood companion of King Herod Antipas, and Saul. While they were worshipping as priests before the Lord in prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, I have called Barnabas and Saul to do an important work for me. Now, release them to go and fulfill it. So after they had fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So Saul and Barnabas and their assistant Mark, known as John, were directed by the Holy Spirit to go to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they finally arrived at Salamis, they went to the synagogues and declared the word of God. Before then, Barnabas was a son of consolation in the early church until consecration led him to sell off all of his assets to serve full time. Acts 4, 36-37 In the same vein, Paul was arrested by Jesus on the road to Damascus and given an idea of what his assignment would be in Acts 9, 1 to 19. So I'm here talking about various people called and sent out as apostles other than the original 12. So first we had Matthias, then Barnabas and Saul. Now we have Apollos. He was a disciple with limited understanding of the gospel, but later became a great apostle after he was perfected in knowledge by Priscilla and her husband Aquila. Acts 18, verses 24 to 28 reads, A man named Apollos came to Ephesus. He was a Jew, born in Alexandria, Egypt, and a terrific speaker, eloquent and powerful in his preaching of the scriptures. He was well educated in the way of the master and fiery in his enthusiasm. Apollos was accurate in everything he taught about Jesus, up to a point, but he only went as far as the baptism of John. He preached with power in the meeting place. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and told him the rest of the story. When Apollos decided to go on to Achaia province, his Ephesian friends gave their blessing and wrote a letter of recommendation for him, urging the disciples there to welcome him with open arms. The welcome paid off. Apollos turned out to be a great help to those who had become believers through God's immense generosity. He was particularly effective in public debate with the Jews as he brought out proof after convincing proof from the scriptures that Jesus was in fact God's Messiah. Apollos later exerted great influence on many, so much that people compared him with Paul and Peter. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 1 to 8 and 21 to 23. And I read, 
And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present to come are all yours, and you are Christ and Christ is God. Testimony of Paul in the master plan of the church as given by Jesus to him as master builder. Beyond all that was said above, the same Paul, who the Protestant movement and its offspring rely upon to base their faith and practices, is the same vessel Yahweh used to outline in clear detail that the apostle is one of the fivefold offices given for perfection of saints so they can mature and do the work of ministry as the royal priesthood. Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. And he himself, and the he is referring to Jesus, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. That was Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. We have again 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 28 to 29, and God has appointed these in the church. First, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Christ Jesus knew it would take a long time for his church to occupy until he returns and provided the office of apostle as well as prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to work collectively as corporate leadership of saints to serve as his under shepherds. Now remember, we're speaking about the fivefold ministry leadership team. So I'm saying here that Christ Jesus gave these men, or these servants, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to work effectively to equip the saints to serve as his Jesus on the shepherds. Is it not wrong to take, accept, and seek to practice all the verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and ignore the clear provision of verse 28, 
Verse 28, which speaks about, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. And is it not handling the word of Yahweh erroneously and deceitfully? To take and preach on everything in the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians as present truth for all ages and deliberately ignore Ephesians 4, 11 to 16 as an organic whole concerning how the church can be perfected, radiant and powerful? Oh yes, it is wrong. On what authority will a denomination accept one, two or three offices? For example, evangelists pastor and teacher while rejecting or ignoring the two foundational ones namely apostle and prophet because remember first corinthians 12 28 speaks about those whom god has appointed in the church first apostles and second prophets so they are not supposed to be rejected or ignored when they are the foundational ones when Christian religion took off as a fruit of the merger between Rome and a wing of the church, which was tired of persecution, one of the very first things it did was to abolish the two foundational offices of apostles and prophets. It was an intentional plan to take away the strength of the church. Ephesians 2 Verses 18 to 22 reads, For through him, him being Christ, Jesus, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Adronicus and Junia. Again, we are talking about those who became apostles after Jesus Christ. After he ascended, that is. Adronicus and Junia. Many have sought to interpret this passage through various lenses. The ordinary meaning seems to suggest that they were elders in the faith and had been transitioned into apostolic office at this time. Romans 16 verse 7 reads, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. James, the half-brother of Jesus, born to Joseph and Mary. James served the Lord and the early church with distinction. James was chair or moderator of the First Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, 1-19, and gave the ruling regarding shutting down Judaizers who sought to hinder Gentiles from the gospel. Paul also acknowledged him as a man of stature in the church at Jerusalem. While Jesus was in his human or fleshly state, James, like other family members, was not called. His apostolic commission was received after the death, resurrection, and ascension of Christ Jesus. If the final work of reformation will be done to prepare the church to walk in radiant glory of its head and bridegroom Jesus, ahead of his second coming, the need will arise for those called to this office to shed off the yokes of both ignorance and false humility to embrace their callings and assignments with humility. As they submit to all the appointed process, Holy Spirit will use their surrendered and yielded vessels to release great grace with which and through which the saints will be empowered and activated into their Melchizedek priesthood functions. 
those called to this foundational cutting edge function, but who stay in the pastoral office are wearing the wrong garments that are ill-fitting. Their best efforts in this identity crisis will unconsciously release a glass ceiling which limits the ability of those they lead to be optimized for kingdom service. That would be a shame. Join me next week as I continue on the teaching of the fivefold ministry in the church. This has been Teach Me to Obey with yours truly, Anita Punchy Lewis. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. I leave you now with a song written and composed by Nathan Joshua Allen, Spiritual Maturity. Evermore. Gotta reach up to the place where the glory flow Under an open heaven everywhere I go oh, I need to reach up to sunship Can not never be slack, I need to take a grip I gotta get all of the benefits From being no being to God's profit yeah. The real church of Christ got the fivefold The fivefold turn the people to disciples The disciples go and live out the word The word becomes flesh, not some little mummy verse But Ephesians 4, 11 and the leaders of today Got the people in the building only leading them astray Cause the leaders themselves only stuck at one stage But for me, I gotta say Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be, yeah, yeah God, I wanna do your will, but I was left by myself to drill Going to use a skill every Sunday Hear a sermon and I'm okay Lead worship and I'm okay I should write the door and I'm okay That is what the people and them say But I gotta know what you say It doesn't matter what you do in a building You still could be living like a heathen Fly on time at every meeting But at your bedside you ain't seeking me Think you can do it by yourself No I gave these gifts just to help you reach to maturity So you can sow like a needle with me Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be, yeah, yeah